There's no worse feeling than joining a YOLO RBG group just to see a color scheme that looks like Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Genesis. And trust us, the group leader named X Legolas X probably has no idea what they're actually doing. But that's why we're here. Today, we will be giving you a guide to build the best comp for RBGs. We will be going over the core classes you definitely need in your group no matter what, and then showing you how to build your lineup to fit some unique archetypes. And yes, every class will be included. So stay tuned as we give you the recipe for the best RBG comp in Shadowlands Season 3. But before we get into it, we wanted to remind you about the money back guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. If you don't gain up to 400 rating while actively using our website, we refund you. Simple as that. Our courses make it easy to learn any class and are designed by some of the best players of all time. Joining today costs as little as $4.99 a month and gets you instant access to over 600 premium quality videos. So what are you waiting for? For the best learning experience wow has to offer, check out skillcap.com slash wow today. The first part of building any RBG comp is making sure you have a good core. For the most part, this means having at least one rogue, one guardian druid, and one holy paladin. These are three things you shouldn't ever replace if possible, but let's explain why. First of all, on most maps, you will want at least two base defenders. Think of Eye of the Storm, Arathi Basin, and Deepwind Gorge. Each of these maps include at least two bases that will need to be defended for the majority of the game, often by a single player. Rogues and Guardian Druids happen to be some of the best solo based defenders. For one, both of these classes have the ability to stealth, which by default makes them difficult to CC cap by enemy assaulters. Rogues specifically can deny base assaults thanks to a plethora of control options and by rotating defensive cooldowns, while Guardian Druids have 30 seconds of CC immunity thanks to one of the most broken legendaries in the game. And while we're on topic, both of these classes work really well on any FC maps, as Guardian Druids are easily the best flag carriers thanks to the legendary we just mentioned. And rogues are so strong on offense that even being in stealth can indirectly pressure the enemy team because of the constant threat of a ninja assault or offensive push. The only map where guardian druids aren't really needed is Temple of Katmogu, where balance will have way more value. In any case, aim to have one druid with the ability to play guardian combined with a sub rogue in any RBG lineup. But why holy paladins? Aren't disc priests the best RBG healers? Well, disc priests are good, but the meta has changed quite a bit. The biggest contribution holy paladins bring is cleanse the weak. This is one of the most over budgeted PvP talents for RBGs since it causes any cleanse to automatically remove the same dispelled auras off anyone within the paladin's range. This means that with a single dispel, all Shadow Priest, Boomkin, and Ellie Shaman dots can be removed from everyone within range with virtually no counterplay. You might be saying, well, what about Unstable Affliction? Yes, UA is pretty much the only counter to cleanse the weak, making Affliction Warlocks an essential part of your group, but more on that later. Back on topic, 9.2 was pretty generous to Holy Paladins when it comes to their healing toolkit. Their tier set bonuses combined with Necrolord and its legendary give them massive AoE healing with Light of Dawn. And just to round things out, Paladins offer some unique utility options for their team, especially with Aura Mastery. This is a multi-purpose tool that has enormous value in teamfights both offensively to free cast damage and defensively to quickly recover HP. So, just to recap, you will want at least one sub rogue, one druid who can play guardian, and one holy paladin on your team no matter what. These specs fill out the absolute necessities for your team, and playing without any one of them will be a huge mistake. With the core out of the way, you're gonna need some compliments. Think of your core like getting some popcorn, and now you just need a drink to go with it. In this case, that means making sure you have a Boomkin, Affliction Warlock, Mistweaver Monk, and Disc Priest on your team. Now, we already teased having an off-spec balanced druid on your team when we covered Guardian, but having a dedicated Boomkin is also incredibly strong. Just like rogues, balanced druids are a jack of all trades. They offer enormous pressure in teamfights thanks to Convoke the Spirits, while also being one of the most mobile DPS classes, allowing them to easily play objectives when needed. And with the ability to go stealth, their offensive value cannot be understated, as they join rogues in the ability to ninja cap bases, especially into inexperienced RBG teams. Moving on, Affliction Warlocks have become one of the most important assets on any RBG team for a few reasons. As we mentioned before, Holy Paladins are the best healer, and that is partially due to Cleanse the Weak. Unstable Affliction is one of the few answers to this problem and can easily punish AoE dispels whenever Cleanse is pressed. But that obviously isn't the only reason you want an Affliction Warlock on your team. Their damage throughput is the absolute best in the game, and their AoE pressure has enormous ramp during intense teamfights. Outside of that though, they offer some unique utility 
utility options with Gateway and Healthstone. Mobility is massively important in RBGs, and having a single button that elevates your entire team's mobility is incredibly useful. And while not being the most glamorous or exciting utility option, health stones are still really strong in a damage heavy meta. And speaking of healing, Mistweaver monks join our complementary classes for RBGs in the 9.2 meta. Just like Holy Paladins, monks make our list partially because they're AoE healing, where Revival combined with the Peace Weaver PvP talent is a massive part of their healing toolkit in RBGs. This combo is one of the best ways to swing pressure in teamfights and provides a counter to unstable affliction when it's spread on multiple targets. Aside from that, monks offer a unique zoning tool in the form of Ring of Peace. This spell has multiple uses, but it's especially good on Warsong Gulch for preventing flag carriers from moving into the tunnel, while also being able to deny enemy players from reaching the CDR buff in the center of the Deep Wind Gorge. All of this comes with some of the best mobility of any healer, and as we've already mentioned, mobility is king in RBGs. Finally, we need to talk about Disc Priests. We mentioned earlier that they have been replaced by Holy Paladins as the god tier healer of RBGs, but they are still really good. One of the main reasons for this is their ability to AoE heal pretty efficiently thanks to Power Word Radiance, which is a massive team-wide heal when combined with Ultimate Radiance. This on top of Dome of Light Barriers, which give their team AoE damage reduction, which comes in handy in dense teamfights like Eye of the Storm, especially against melee cleave damage. All of this AoE healing tech comes with the fact that Disc Priest has some of the best utility options of any healer. Power Infusion, Life Grip, and AoE Knock are all great tools to have on virtually every map. Map. So just to recap, your group at this point should include the core elements of Sub Rogue, Guardian Druid, and Holy Paladin, while also including important components like Boomkin, Affliction Warlock, Disc Priest, and Mistweaver Monk. That still leaves three available slots, so let's figure out the best way to fill out your RBG group. This is the part where you can really start developing the sauce for your team, and there are a few different archetypes you can run, which we will get into later. But for now, let's focus on building a balanced group, which starts by adding a Death Knight. Similar to Arena, the role of the DK in RBGs is to set up kills and slow the game down. This second part is done primarily through their spell warding mechanic. This can periodically proc haste reduction debuffs on enemy casters, which helps slow down the pace of teamfights. On top of this, Frost DKs have multiple tools to literally slow enemy players down, and since most Mobility is king, this makes DKs some sort of anti-king, being able to slow players while they try and reach key objective points. Offensively though, one important role DKs have is the ability to keep enemy players in one place thanks to Abomination Limb and Death Grip. This can come in handy on maps where AoE knocks are possible, especially when it is combined with Shadow Rift from a Warlock. The ability to reposition multiple targets for knocks gives them enormous value whenever that tech is possible. Next up, we have Demon Hunter, who make this list because they go fast. But seriously, the utility of a DH in RBGs cannot be understated, especially with Spectral Sight. As we already mentioned, Rogues and Boomkins play a huge role in affecting the course of a game through ninja assaults. Spectral Sight is one of the only ways to actively counteract this. And offensively, Demon Hunters offer two key abilities. The first is an AoE healing reduction effect thanks to the Mortal Dance PvP talent. The other is passive spell damage increases on enemy players thanks to Chaos Brand. This essentially just makes their Warlock's damage even stronger and is a low key reason Demon Hunters are so valuable. With that in mind, your RBG group should look something like this. Remember that you should try and play with the core specs at all times and avoid making substitutions with the complements whenever possible. You can get away with ditching DKs and Demon Hunters at lower ratings, but it might give you some issues into higher rated teams. So we know what some of you might be thinking. Okay, Skill Capt, are you telling us to play meta comps all the time? Well, no, which is why you can develop even more flavor on your team with some unique substitutions. Depending on the dynamic you want your team to have, you can fill out optional slots with some of these specs. So let's break it down. Destro Warlocks, Frost Mages, and Elemental Shamans are all excellent DPS classes in RBGs and have the ability to deal a ton of damage while offering unique utility like Thunderstorm or Ice Wall. Their main drawback, however, is the fact that they need to hard cast a lot of their damage, which can make them really easy to shut down and cleave intensive teamfights. For Shamans specifically, Cleanse the Weak can make it really hard to deal damage if Flame Shocks, even with Control of Lava, is selected. But speaking of cleaves, Rhett Paladins and Warriors are able to add additional melee flavor to your team, and their damage is absolutely brutal when combined with the lockdown of a Death Knight. The main issue with Paladins is that their damage is only threatening during wings, and although it can constantly be refreshed by Aura of Reckoning, they're not really too useful outside of these short damage windows. Warriors are pretty scary for a few reasons, and one of them is Necro Banner and Kyrian Spear. These abilities give their melee partners even more damage when combined with other modifiers. In any case, having 
having a rat and warrior on your team can add tremendous offensive pressure, especially in really dense teamfights. And that brings us to our final flavor option, Mark's Hunters. Look, Hunters have always had a bit of an awkward time slotting into an RBG roster. They're not bad at all, it's just that other classes are able to perform their same role, but usually better. In any case, adding a Mark's Hunter to your team adds unique damage to your team fight. They're kind of like a Frost Mage or Destro Warlock, and are simply designed to blast people during Truth Shot and Double Tap. You can sit bases as Hunter as well, but that is slightly outdated tech at this point, and their contribution to teamfights is way more valuable. Now you should have a better understanding of what classes make for a good RBG comp, and it's time to look at some archetypes. Remember that you should never change your core specs, and very rarely change your complements, but with this foundation you can create synergies by combining some other classes. One approach is building your team around a melee cleave. This is done by adding a Rhett Paladin and Fury Warrior to join your Frost DK. Melee cleaves are really good in dense teamfights and can be super threatening during short damage windows. You could also take a spell damage approach, adding an Elemental Shaman, Frost Mage, Destro Warlock, or even another Affliction Warlock to your lineup. This will give you slightly more control, but at the cost of being shut down by enemy cleaves in some situations. Finally, you could fill out your comp to be really good at playing objectives by adding another Sub Rogue and Balanced Druid. This can be really good on maps with base assaults, as stacking these classes makes your offensive pushes infinitely more confusing for the enemy team. And in case you were wondering, your healers can be substituted as well. If you want to play competitively, you should still have a Holy Paladin and Mistweaver Monk on your team, but this can be replaced by Resto Druid, Holy Priest, and even Resto Shaman in that order. In any case, when building your comp, always try and have a solid core group built first, making sure you never play without a Sub Rogue, Guardian Druid, and Holy Paladin. From there, add some compliments and flavor. We've given our ideal suggestions, but even if we didn't mention a specific spec, it doesn't mean you shouldn't invite it to your group. Instead, recognize that RBGs are like Arena and that there is a spectrum of comps you can play, but the best comps are meta for a reason. But we want to know what you think. How would you build your ideal RBG comp? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, we want to remind you that SkillCap.com is the ideal place to rank up this season. Once again, we offer a money back guarantee if you don't climb up to 400 rating while actively using our website. For the same cost as a monthly Twitch sub, you can get instant access to over 600 premium quality videos. So what are you waiting for? Visit SkillCap.com slash wow to learn more. Anyway guys, that wraps up today's video. Once again, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always though, we hope you learned something useful and thanks for watching.